Hope y'all are having a great weekend. Welcome to another episode of Murders, Mysteries, and More. My name is Kaylee. My name is Desi. Be sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell next to the subscribe button to turn on post notifications. Before we get into this case, we always encourage those who have useful information to any unsolved case, please report it to your local police and sheriff department. In many horror movies, you always watch some creepy man hiding behind a mask kill innocent lives. You see the victim reach for the phone to call 911. You hear the sound of the victim's heart pulsating. Then you hear a scream. You watch them hit the floor. Blood dripping everywhere. What if I told you even nightmares like this come true? Today, we will be bringing to life the creepy case of the Watcher. Maria Broadus, her husband Derek, and three young children were moving to their dream home in June 2014. Their new home was at 657 Boulevard in Westfield, New Jersey. Their new home had six bedrooms and was worth a whopping $1.3 million. This house was located only a couple blocks away from the house Maria grew up in. This town was considered to be one of the 30th safest town in America. Three years prior to their arrival, a letter was received in their new mailbox. New, o- the new owner was written on the envelope. Here's what the letter says, quote unquote. Here's new neighbor at 657 Boulevard. Allow me to welcome you to the neighborhood. How did you end up here? Did 657 Boulevard call you to its force within? 657 Boulevard has been the subject of my family for decades now, and as it approaches its 110th birthday, end quote. It gets even creepier from there. The letter continues, quote unquote, I've been watching and waiting for its second coming. My grandfather watched the house in the 1920s, and my father watched in the 1960s. It is now my time. Watcher asks, who am I? There are hundreds and hundreds of cars that drive by 657 Boulevard each day. Maybe I am in one. Look at all the windows you see from 657 Boulevard. Maybe I am in one. Look at all the people who stroll by each day. Maybe I am one. The letter does mention information about the broadest family, quote unquote. You have children. I've seen them. So far, I think there are three that I have counted. Do you need to fill the house with young blood I requested? Was your house too small for the growing family? Was it agreed to bring me to your children? Once I know their names, I will call them and draw them to me. The letter ends right there. In cursive font, the author typed the watcher. Immediately, the family got a hold of previous owners, John and Andrea Woods. The previous owners found those letters very creepy and mentioned they never received any letters like these except once, which was a couple days before they moved out of their house. However, the couple dis- disregarded them and told the family they shouldn't fret over it. Regardless, the Broaddus family went to the police to report the letter. Police told them not to tell anyone about the letters because it could be one of the neighbors. Two weeks later, the Broaddus family did not move in and there was a second letter. This letter was far more disturbing than the previous letters. The letter included the name of the family, their children by birth, order, and nicknames. The stalker states they saw their daughter painting outside, painting inside in a sunroom. The stalker asked, is she the artist in the family? It is so crazy that not only they knew the family's last name, but also the children's nicknames. The letter continues, it has been years and years since young blood had ruled the hallways of the house. Have you found all the secrets it holds yet? Will the young blood play in the basement alone? Or are they too afraid to go down there alone? I would be very afraid if I were them. It is far away from the rest of the house. If you were upstairs, you would never hear them scream. Will they sleep in the attic? Or will you all sleep on the second floor? Who has the bedrooms facing the street? I'll know as soon as you move in. It will help me to know who is in which bedroom. Then I can plan better. End quote. After receiving the second letter, the parents decided to stop letting their kids visit the house. They also put moving in on hold. It does not stop from there, though. Another letter arrived at the house, and it asked, Where have you gone to? 657 Boulevard is missing you. 
By the end of 2014, police stopped the investigation on who the watcher was. There were no clues on the internet, nor was there DNA evidence of fingerprints. Derek Broaddus said he was suffering depression because of the letters. Maria suffered from PTSD. Like any normal family, the parents suffered. They wanted their family to feel safe, but it was far from that. Six months later, the family decided it would be in their best interest to sell the house. However, it was difficult to sell because of the media's attention to the creepy letters. The buyers went to sue the Woods because prior to purchase, the Woods did not disclose the threats they had received. A local reporter had found the complaint that included snippets from the threatening letters. The Broaddus family started looking for a developer to buy the house and tear it down. But they found a buyer that wanted to split the house into two separate family homes. However, this would not work because the houses would be three feet too small, mandated by the HOA. The family wrote to the HOA, but it was rejected. Maria was devastated. She says, this is my town and I grew up here. I came back. I chose to raise my kids here. You know what we've been through. You have the ability two and a half years into a nightmare to make it a little better. And now you have decided this house is more important than we are. In 2018, the HOA agreed that another house near 657 Boulevard in Westville could be split into two properties. This required a much larger exception than what the Broaddus family wanted. The Christmas of 2014, those who did not approve of the Broaddus family's plan received threatening letters from the friends of the Broaddus family. In spring of 2016, two years after the first letter was received, the Broaddus found renters. The family that was going to rent the home had two large dogs, adult children, and in their lease there was a clause. It stated they would be let out if another threat were to be received. Two weeks later, another letter was received. It says, to the vile and despiteful Derek and his wench of a wife, Maria. 657 Boulevard survived your assault and stood strong with its armies of supporters barricading its gates. My soldiers on the boulevard followed my orders to a T. They carried out their mission and saved the soul of 657 Boulevard with my orders. All hell the watcher. The letter continues on. Maybe a car accident, maybe a fire, maybe something as simple as a mild illness that never seems to go away, but makes you feel sick day after day after day after day. Maybe the mysterious death of a pet. Loved ones die suddenly. Planes, cars, bike, and bicycles crash. Bonds break. You are despised by the house and the watcher one. Renters decided to stay if more cameras were installed around the house. There are a couple theories floating around who the watcher could be. The first one is known, named as the gamer. 11 p.m. one night, Westfield police watched a suspicious car stop in front of a house. The police traced the car to a young adult woman. Her boyfriend lived near 657 Boulevard. A police went to investigate this woman. She talks about how her boyfriend is into some really creepy games. One game being called The Watcher. The gamer allowed police to interview him. However, he never showed up and there was a lack of evidence pointing it towards him being the suspect. The second suspect is neighbor Michael Langford. Derek suspected Michael after attending a neighborhood cookout. What's odd is that the Langford family had lived in their house since the 60s, which is mentioned in the first letter. Not only that, but his dad died 12 years later, and the watcher does mention taking over watching the house after his dad was gone. Langford would often peek through neighbors' windows and walk in their yards. From Langford's house, he would have perfect view to watch the Broaddus' daughter paint. Police interviewed Michael before the second letter, and Michael denied knowing anything about the family. Most people in the neighborhood have vouched for Langford. They did not believe he sent those letters. Police were able to find some DNA evidence on the envelope. They saw it belonged to a woman, so they suspected Michael's sister, Abby. However, her DNA did not match up with the watchers. The last theory was the family made up the watcher themselves. Derek wrote the letters because they could not afford the home. It was found out another family also received a letter from the watcher, but they threw theirs away. Who is the watcher? Could it be one of the neighbors that didn't want the Broaddus family to move in? Could it have been Derek himself because he no longer could afford to live in the home he had purchased? Could it be some teenagers that wanted to prank them? 
or a serial killer lurking in the neighborhood at night. Why did the Watcher write the letters? I feel like the Watcher wrote the letters because he was getting some sort of joy out of this. He was kind of, you know, teasing or tormenting this family as he was getting joy out of watching them. And as he stated in his letters before, his grandfather had watched the house in the 20s and his father had watched the house in the 60s. So he thought it was his turn to watch the house and therefore wrote the letters to let the Broadus family know that, hey, I'm here, I'm watching your house. How do you feel about it? There's a couple different reasons why the Watcher watched the house. One is that some people, even if they don't end up doing anything, they want to stop people because their mind is totally messed up and they just get extreme joy out of stalking people and making people freak out. Even if they don't want to do like any harm, still they are doing some psychological harm. They're just getting joy out of that. But it also could truly be someone that is a psychopath and really did want to kill this family. And like you mentioned before, that they talked about how their father and grandfather had watched the house before. So they felt like this, whether their parents were dead or not, they felt like this was their time to take over and watch the house. Why did the Woods not inform the Broadus family that they received a threatening letter from the Watcher before? The Broadus family, before they purchased the home, did not find out that the Woods actually had received a letter until they purchased the home. Whenever they received their first letters, they reached out to the Woods. So I think one of the reasons why the Woods might not have informed them is because the Woods only received this letter a couple days before and they hadn't received one before so they thought maybe that this person was doing it for a prank. It wasn't anything too serious. No harm was going to be done because they felt safe the entire time and they thought that the family would not keep receiving a whole bunch of letters. The Woods could have also not told them because when the Broaddus family did later on try to sell the home, they had struggled to sell it because obviously trying to sell a home that has received some creepy letters from some sort of stalker, who's gonna wanna buy that home? So they probably left that part out because they wanted to move out and they were tired of being watched. So they kind of just left that information out because they believed that if they told the Broaddus family, the Broaddus family would not have bought the home and the couple would have been still stuck at this home and possibly in an unsafe situation. Would it have been a neighbor that did not want the family to move in the house? It is very possible that it could have been a neighbor, even though it is very odd to do that to somebody who is moving into a house in your neighborhood. There are people like that who are very creepy and weird and petty and are very partial to keeping the same neighbors in their neighborhood for almost basically life. Also very weird and obsessive, but it could have been anybody. It could have even been their next door neighbor. It could have also been a prank. It, there's all kinds of possibilities, but sometimes people do the weirdest things just because they don't like change. Yeah, I think it's a possibility that it could have been a neighbor because whenever this family did want to get rid of this home and like move out everything, so many different people in the neighborhood were like really kind of against the family and they were not on the side of the family to begin with. So I think that is a possibility that someone in the neighborhood didn't want them to move in. Something to say about some smaller towns as well is not all smaller towns are like this, but sometimes in certain towns, they don't like change. They don't want someone new to move in, maybe because someone new has moved in before and trashed the place and they don't want them to run the, the neighborhood. Could the Watcher be one of the previous suspects we mentioned, especially Michael Langford? The couple suspects we mentioned before were the gamer, and I feel like with the gamer, that's probably not the case, because 
People play creepy video games all the time and people play all sorts of violent video games and just because you play a violent video game or a creepy video game does not mean you're going to go out and do that in real life. And there was just such a severe lack of evidence and yes he might have played a game coincidentally called the watcher but there are so many really creepy just random games out there so it is definitely more of a coincidence it is a little bit odd that the police were able to trace like a car that stopped at night to a woman and get all this out of it but the thing is even though this car did stop creepily at night, they only saw it happen once. They didn't see it happen repeatedly. And sometimes it may look weird that someone stopped, but maybe they stopped at night because they were looking at something on their phone. There's a number of different reasons. Maybe they just were not. Maybe they got a phone call or something and just stopped. Now, Michael Langford is a little bit sus because he is picking at other people's windows and walking through the yard however the writing matches a woman and they already tested his sister and it ended up not being her but it still could have been him it could have been a girlfriend of his or another family member because they didn't test some other family members such as his grandmother he could have made them write it. He definitely is a little bit sus, but again, there's still a severe lack of evidence. Yeah, and it could be a completely different neighbor, or it could be some random weird dude that isn't really mentioned or thought about in this case. Don't really know who it could be, to be honest, without too much more evidence. Did the watcher hire someone else to write the letter, or was it really a woman stalking them? The DNA evidence found on the letter was from a woman, but not, did not match Langford's sister, Abby. So, what could have happened very easily as far as hiring someone to write the letter? He could have hired someone as far as like an outsource and all that stuff, or a private person to write this letter and paid them a decent amount of cash. He also could have convinced or even hired a family member to write the letter for him, so that way he didn't leave any trace evidence on the letters. So that way he wouldn't get caught. But also, it could really be a woman stalking them. Although it's more likely for a man to stalk people or just families or children or anything in general, women have the same tendencies as men do. We are all human and we have parts about ourselves, but there's those people out there who are extremely, extremely creepy and different and women have those tendencies too so it could be very possible that a woman whether it be a woman neighbor or just some random woman in the town could have been stalking them yeah i think that there is a possibility that the watcher did hire someone else to ride it it'd be a lot easier to get away with it if they hired somebody else and the letter was part of the letter was typed obviously they could have hired someone really far away to write these letters and send them to them and then they sent them to the family and that's why police could not trace it to anybody specifically because the person was not even there but a lot of people also tend to think that men cannot be victims as well but men can very well be victims as well there are crazy women out there believe it or not so it could have also been a woman that was a neighbor that did truly write the letters and did truly stalk the family it's really hard saying because it could honestly go either way. Which leads into the next question, was the whole neighborhood on it? So this kind of basically means to kind of like the neighborhood get together, create these letters because they didn't want the family to move in. So this could have also happened as well. Previous owners did receive a letter a few days before, but maybe they did that because they did not want the woods to leave this house and sell it to someone else so that's why they wrote a letter and then 
they sold it anyways the neighborhood was frustrated did not want this new family to move in so they did everything in their power and sent a bunch of letters and they were like this is going to scare the family away and want them to leave that could be why we aren't seeing any more evidence pop up because when you have that big of group of the people and that could also be why the police didn't find anything because maybe even the police knew that the whole neighborhood was on it but they didn't really want to do much of anything because they knew like the neighborhood wasn't going to do anything crazy the neighborhood just wanted to scare the people away and not move there because they didn't want to mess up how their neighborhood was like they didn't want change to happen at all it didn't create the watcher to gain attention or get out of a house they could not afford their previous home was worth a little over three hundred thousand dollars but this home was worth 1.3 million dollars it is very possible that derek or Derek and his wife created the Watcher to gain attention or to get out of this house, especially if they didn't have the funds or didn't really have the capability to afford it after all like they thought. People do do crazy things to get out of things sometimes or to get attention, you know, some people are attention whores of course. But I personally, I feel like it's kind of more of a stretch for them to do that just to get out of a house they couldn't afford. If they truly didn't realize they couldn't afford it, I would think that they would have realized it before the final sale had went through. Albeit, some people aren't the smartest, of course. And some people don't calculate their finances, calculate closing costs and all that stuff into houses. I feel like the Broadis family was pretty smart in knowing what they could and couldn't afford. I feel like it's definitely a very probable theory that they could have done it to gain attention or to get out of the house, but I feel like it's kind of more unlikely and it might have just been some random creep that was trying to push them out of that house. Yeah, I feel like it's a bit of a stretch as well for the family to have created this creepy story of the Watcher and created all the letters and went through that all those details that just seems like a whole bunch of extra work why would derek himself do that and also another neighbor as well did receive letters so why would they go and send letters to someone else that would just be dumb on their part when you do buy a home you do have to go through a process now the process was probably a little bit different but not that much different because they did buy this home in 2014 so you already have to go through a realtor usually and you most often have to get a loan such as like an FHA loan which requires a certain level of credit and it requires you to have a certain income and all that stuff so I don't think if they did not have the funds that a realtor would let them purchase a home that expensive. They could have easily had a really well paying job and they may have stayed at that cheaper home before because they were trying to plan it to save up for this dream home so they were living well below their means for a few years. It's very common for a lot of people with their starter homes like be on the cheaper side or older and then they go on later to sell and get their dream home that's pretty common actually so i definitely think that they probably did not make it because like i said you are have to go through an extensive process to get a home anyways and i don't think any realtor would just let them purchase a home if they didn't have the funds at all who do we think the watcher is so there's a couple of theories that i have my theory i believe the most is probably the neighbors just did not want change they didn't want this family to move in and they were upset at the woods for selling the home and so that is why they sent the letters to this home because they only sent the letters to this home and one other home once 
So I feel like if it was really someone who was going to be serious, why weren't they targeting other homes? That's just kind of like odd to me. They're only targeting this one um, that has a family that's not even in the town moving into the town. So that makes it seem more like it was a neighbor. It could have also been a group of teenage boys. Teenage boys find anything entertaining. So they could have thought it'd be a really hilarious prank to prank this new family that's moving in and scare them to death. And maybe they did not realize that the family was really going to take this really serious and this was going to scare them completely away and make the family try to sell it. And since they couldn't sell it, they ended up renting it to someone else. And the renters who actually rented the house did not get too many letters. They only got the two letters and that's it and then it kind of stopped. So that's what makes it me think that it could be a bunch of teenage boys because after a while it does kind of get old and maybe they thought okay we've sent enough letters and now the police are really taking this serious. We're just going to stop writing these letters. Um, it could also have still been a creepy stalker that just enjoys watching this family and just wants to creep people out and they enjoy the psychological harm it causes people. Maybe they don't want to cause physical harm but they want to just cause psychological harm for their own enjoyment. Yeah, I personally feel like it could be anyone at this point that was harassing this family. It could have been a neighbor. Could have been somebody from their past that they didn't realize or didn't think that would do this to them, but either way, it was very creepy, and whoever this was intentionally targeted this poor family, which caused them to try to get rid of this house after not feeling comfortable moving into it. I, I really feel like we did have two pretty good suspects, be it Michael Langford could be who it could be, and Gamer not so much, but whoever it was, they did this intentionally, and it was just so fucking creepy. Yeah, it's definitely like really creepy looking at it it's just super odd to me that like the neighborhood was really against the family like it was kind of sad and like even the previous owners that owned the home felt like it was no big freaking deal but it's hard to say whether or not when you get letters like this is your life really in danger or is this just someone stalking in the window out of couple teenage boys just doing this out of enjoyment it's really hard to kind of the lines are kind of blurry being able to tell whether or not like this could have turned into something worse thank god it didn't but it's definitely really scary to have anyone stalk you in your home or even send these letters thank you for listening to another episode of murders mysteries and more remember to always keep your eyes open you never know when someone's creeping